grain of rice is going to tip the scale. Just remember that, lads. With his fourth point of the game, the great supporters are coming under the park. It's over. It's over. Have you seen a better Westmead performance than this they've given in the second half? John Heslin now as a support player, may not need him. Go straight, he's scored! Back down here by Roxy Brown. The red line is what's the goals, and Westmead are champions. Agony, we've said both of the two Agony, we've said Artigan Moltoon is coming in. with Kieran Martin, was the captain until he got injured, here he is, it's Martin, Kieran Martin! Hello everyone and you're very welcome to this year's series of podcasts called The Westmead Game which is brought to you by EarV TV. I'm joined by two very special guests here, uh, Paula Donovan, uh, editor-in-chief of the sports section of the Westmead Topic, Shane Donahue, Milltown Pass legend. <laughs> Popular uh, EarV TV pundit. Um, lads, you're very welcome. Um, my name is Donnie Malone. I am covering for Mr. Ray Gavin, of course, who is off sunning himself in lovely Florida at the moment. <laughs> but uh, this year uh, we'll be bringing you a series of podcasts um, in both hurling and football, um, starting tonight with the uh, preview of the football championship. Um, so We'll start off, and I'm looking at Paula Donovan's back page on the Westmead topic here. Heartbreaking is the headline, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Tony was a heartbreaking weekend for everyone who was, you know, particularly those who were up in Breffney Park on, on Sunday evening. Uh, we, you know, a huge performance by the Westmead footballers. As I said, we, we came so close to causing a major upset, beaten, you know, we actually drew, uh, I suppose, as, as you know, Kevin Maguire said to me afterwards, it just felt like a defeat, even though people kind of forget that we actually drew the match with Tyrone, but it was it was the same as a defeat. We came so close to beating the all Ireland champions from two years ago, and uh, a very good Tyrone team, a yeah, huge performance, uh, you know, with a the chance there at the end, the John Heslin's free, just, just went inches wide, and that's how close we came. Made it even worse to find out then after the final whistle that our man had actually beaten Galway, and we would have gone through. We, we could have been going to... Donegal on, on Saturday, but that's that's football. That's as Desi said, it's inches that count. Shane, uh, we were we were very very close. Um, we had a disappointing probably Leinster campaign. We were in a great position in Navan, but we we had a really good All Ireland series, didn't we? Yeah, fantastic. And um, I would think that a lot of it was strategized there during the year. Obviously, uh, Division Three didn't go to plan, uh, but I would imagine that there was always a feeling knowing that we were, because of the Talton Cup winners, that we were in an All-Ireland series, that there were three crucial games to prepare for, to you know, set up a game plan, set up an understanding of how we need to be to c- compete with the, the top teams in the country. And, you know, kudos and credit to everybody involved. Uh, I didn't get to all three games, but I watched all three games. And I thought we acquitted ourselves very well. And in particular last weekend because I think last weekend what happened more so than in the Armagh and Galway game I think Tyrone tried to come after Westmead you know they pressed up the pitch and lesser footballers and I mean it genuinely uh, lesser footballers would have crumbled but Westmead on a number of occasions trusted themselves to play the ball out through that that pressure and because of that they cut by that pressure then they really punished Tyrone I think it shocked them. It shocked them on a couple of levels. First of all, technically, how how good of footballers we have in this county, especially our one through 15 that are starting and maybe the next three or four and maybe knock off another two there that were injured. You know, you s- a serious panel to compete. Desi mentioned in his, his interview afterwards, t- he needs to tag on a few more players into this panel that can be at that level. I think we'll discuss some of them later on that are coming, but... Yeah, technically, we have the ability, and if it has to go back to Joan Angle and crew and Jack Cooney previously, the strength and conditioning that's in these guys has been tested to the utmost over the last number of weeks, and they've passed with flying colours. We we all know how excellent John Heslin has been. I spoke to him the other night. I know it won't define him as a footballer, and I know he won't let it define him as a footballer. It is sport. It does come down to inches, but... I think this does an awful lot more for Westmead football than the actual Talton Cup win last year. 
because the Talton Cup, as good as it was, and uh, there was a bit of a party around town, it always felt like second prize because we hadn't qualified from Division 3. But present us with the toughest group in the senior championship and the whole country talking about Ron O'Toole and Canell and, and you know the style of football Westmead were able to play I, I just think it's massive for the county and hopefully okay. we see these stars perform now in our club championship we'll well. absolutely and uh, I suppose we'll, we'll start and we're going to start as we all know with the four tiers in, in Westmead at the moment and we're just going to have a look at the junior two and looking at the tables here and then, you know, uh, Multifarnham, Loch the Valley, Rosemount second team, Colliery second team, Delvin in one group. You have the Downs, which is uh, their third team. Uh, Mullingar Shamrocks, I think, is their second team. Uh, Carlstown, Kinney Gad, Kalukan, and Balnagore. Um, I suppose, just to summarise, what... Do you see, what way do you, do you see any of the sole junior clubs getting out of that, getting out of them groups? Uh, I suppose, you know, when, when you look back, and, and I, I just, I just before we just move on to it, uh, it was great to see the, the league finals being played in, in Cusick Park. I remember a few years ago, not that long ago, when leagues were just, they were just there, they were like challenge matches, nobody paid any attention. I don't think half the divisions were finished, some of the games weren't played. And it, it ended up like that. There was no America pass. And the last few years, it's been really good. All the league games, they're all completed regardless. Uh, we get to finals now, and the finals are being played in Cusick Park. And that's a huge day out for lads. I just, you know, particularly when we're on the junior football here, it's a big day out for lads in, in junior teams to get to play in Cusick Park. They might never get there. Some, so some of them, it's the only medal they ever win. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see uh, them getting the opportunity to, to play on the big stage. And of course, the, you know, the junior final will be played in Cusick Park too. So that's another big day out for all these players. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it, it's hard to judge it this early in the season. But uh, I, I'd say Callery will be very strong in, 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 in that junior two section anyway. Um, Shane, it's, you know, there, was some, there has been debate about, um, you know, the sole junior clubs in the fourth tier now of, of Westmead since we introduced the fourth tier a number of years ago. Um, but... It's it is like for your for Balnagore and, and Delve and Lochna Valley teams like that. I know they're playing strong second teams there as well, but it is a real chance of winning a championship for these teams and, and, and building something. Yeah, building or maintaining or keeping alive in some cases. I think uh, credit I picked Lochna Valley out credit to them. They've they've managed year on year except for the year of COVID, I think, to put a team into the championship. It's been difficult for them. I, very, very little underage in in the sense that guys are playing elsewhere underage and then they keep their allegiance to wh maybe where their father played or where their mother's from. And, you know, credit to them. Uh, the club wants to stay alive. And unfortunately, that's the level that they're at and water finds its level. And I think Delvin, similarly, uh, predominantly probably a hurling area, but at and they operate as two separate clubs, and I know that from being a county board delegate that they'll have multiple votes in there or whatever the case, but they're operating there. We have to provide football for them. I think the fourth tier does provide a, an opportunity. I don't think either of them will come through it, to be honest. I think um, the, the senior and intermediate clubs that are entering this, and if we look at the, the finalists last year, I think it was Moat and Kinney Gad, I think it's just a depth and squad and the fact that these guys be them younger or if we look at Aidan Gurry last week, captain in Kinney Gads Division uh, 5 team or yeah. Division, I think it was Division 5 the one and Aidan's yeah. uh, a well-seasoned guy, I think he's in his mid-40s and couple that with young lads coming through and you know Ballymore were very similar in their Division 7 and a, a group like that is really going to put it up to Delvin, Lochna Valley uh, whoever else, is ba Balnagore. Um, Balnagore, probably the one of the three of them that has the best chance mm. because they're a more established club. And I think Balnagore have struggled in the last few years from Michael Lennis tried to come back and I guess the body just didn't allow him after all the years of service he gave to Westmead. And I know Tommy McDaniels is stationed up in Dublin and is operating, he, and rightly so, he's a senior footballer. He's living up there. He's actually playing inside with Kieran Kilkenny, I think, in 
in Castleknock. And, you know, if you, if he ever returns to his home club, which I know he told me recently would be something he'll want to do, Balnagore won't be down there for too long. Mm. Yeah. And that would be an ambition that Tommy and his father ahead of him, a great club man as well. And I think Balnagore that way have a better chance of progressing long term. Um, just to sum up the junior two then, winners, close, winners and finalists, Paul. Go ahead there, Shane. Shane. <laughs> and and Paul I'm, 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 I'm considering <laughs> thoughts here. You show me the, the second teams that are in it. We've, look, I, I think it's going to come from a Rosemount or a Multi Farnham or who's in the, I don't have to say, that's the, say, the, the other group. section yeah. of it. Yeah. Unfortunately. I think it'll play out like last year, like I said, with Moat and Kinnegad. Um, but the, what comes out of that? Players who win that championship can't play in it again next year. So it'll eventually all level itself out. This is only... Junior 2 is only probably in its third season, is it, Donny? Yeah. Yeah. So fourth season. Think, or yeah. fourth season. This yeah. will level itself out after a while. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it'll come from one of the, the more established clubs. Section B is just call them there again, please, Donny. Uh, section B, Paul, you're going to be in the hop. I'll tell you now what Section yeah. B is. So you have multi, you have multi Farnham second, Lochna Valley, Rosemount second, Colliery second, and Delvin. And in the other section, you have the Downs, which is their third team, Mullingar, their third team, Ki Carlstown, Kinnegad, their third team, Kalukan, their third team, and Balnagore. Yeah. Again, just going through that, um, yeah. Ban Lagore, absolutely, you know, hot, hot bed of football and, and out there, the, you know, the strong local local community, they'll, they'll be looking to, to, to bounce back up. So, um, you know, I, I'd like to see Ban Lagore come out of it, absolutely. They'll find it very difficult. Prediction. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go with Ban Lagore coming out of that back. Good stuff. All right, so we'll move on to Junior 1, which is... Uh, it's a pretty competitive. It's a co pretty competitive uh, lineup, um, and again, you have the factor of the second teams in this. So, if we look at Junior One Section A, lads, you're looking at Saint Lomans second team. You're looking at Gary Castle second team. You're looking at the Downs second team. You're looking at Clucan second team, at Lone second team, and Mullingar sec second team. So right. there's six teams there, four to come out. Uh, yeah, it's easier so maybe to look at that group on its. Okay. It's owned yep. only rather than, you know, yep. throw in all 12 names. Uh, top senior clubs all be vying. Uh, it's good that they have to play each other in all the round-robin games mm -hmm. because they will lose some players to their first team. Yep. Uh, four of them come out of it and four of them then will meet fr from the other group. I think any four, depending on how s senior panels are going and where they... But to be noted, Shamrock's had 35 players named for a Division 6 league final recently and as many more for a Division 3 final and they have a senior team. So squad and depth and providing games won't be a problem for them. Uh, Lomans played the vast majority of a Division 1 league campaign and got to the final of it with a lot of guys, and I, do, I don't mean this disingenuously, they won't be starting on their championship senior team. So quite likely that they'll be operating down in, in this group, which makes them very, very strong in, in that in that championship. Um, so again, as it plays out and as the season goes on and maybe as guys are lost to, to the first team, what comes out of that group might be a little bit weaker than what starts it, um, but it could be any, any of the four. You'd have honest. to say, I suppose, Paul, that yeah. St. Lomond's second team would be the probably it uh, would be the strongest team in that group, would they? Yeah, they would. But uh, I have a, a slight inkling there for, for, for Shamrocks maybe uh, reaching yeah. the Division 3 final and the Division 6 final. Yeah. I was impressed, with, as Shane said here, with the amount of players that they had out and available okay. and uh, some, some, some good young players there. So I was just looking for, yeah, absolutely, Lomans going well. They always go well at that level, you know. They're always very well organised in that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think Shamrocks might, might just... Uh, be, be the team from that group this year. And hard to call, obviously, the other two teams. It'll depend, as you yes. say, you the down, on injuries. I think you can throw the downs in there. So your Shamrock's, Lomans and the downs yeah. will be the top three and any one of the others. I think the others have less strength and depth mm -hmm. and less older guys hanging around to play that as much as they would have liked to. 
I don't think they've they've managed to do that. Like I see Donald Dunne who will be playing, and uh, believe it or not, Donald Dunne who will be playing junior championship this year for Shamrocks, mm. and I don't know is he ambition to play anymore. But we know that he wouldn't be found lost in in the middle of a senior. Yeah, yeah, Donald is only forty now, lads. Like That's it, not that old it, it's anymore. It's you know very what I mean? Young, really. like, it's that only a young man now. Wait, like. wait till we start talking about the Masters, <laughs> and the Westmead Masters, well, and yeah, they're great hoping, players. We're hoping again. Yeah. He's denied us. We won't. We won't. He's claiming a, <laughs> we, we a won't, hamstring. We won't go. We won't go there <laughs> no. just yet. Um, again, strength and number. Like the yeah. Downs have have so many numbers of players and quality and depth. And when when teams are going well. You know, when their senior teams are going well, it's, it, it just filters through to the to the club. And, yeah. and you know, you, you see the numbers coming through there. Down's a great club at the moment. Mm. But so I think the next group is the one where... Yeah, your, so your yeah. just looking at, looking at yeah. it here in front of me, um, Section A. So Section A is... Sorry, Section, section B, I should say. S um, St. Joseph's, St. Paul's, Moat, second teams, second team, Kilbegan Shamrocks, uh, Bumbrosna and Ballyk Mile. Mm. So, you know, that's 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 a pretty competitive group there. Yeah. To date, I suppose, just recently, the league matches, St. Joseph's has caught the eye there, and, uh, you know, you, you, Kilbe Kilbegan, all is very strong, lots of experience on their side. I loved uh, watching St. Joseph's in the in the league final there the, the other week, play a lovely brand of football, they have a mixture, a lot of young players find that a lot of them actually look the same. They, they don't have anyone outstanding. They don't have a, a big man or someone that you could, you could pick out. A lot of the players are, are very similar. They're neat. They're tidy on the ball. Uh, and and I, w I was really impressed with them. The, the only thing is there's no tradition there. They haven't, they haven't got past the quarterfinal in, in, I don't know, but it's a long number of years since they have. They threatened to do it, but they've never quite done it. Uh, Quebec and Shamrocks, a lot more quality there, lots more experience and, and knowing how to win games. And, uh, you know, if, if I was asked for any... I mean, of course, you can't leave out from Brosna, you know. They're, they're, they're always there, but they're, they seem to be an aging team to me. They seem to have gone to the well a, a lot of times now. And uh, I know the Bumbrosna lads weren't happy. I didn't tip them in the in the final last year. They weren't happy, but I'm not going to tip them now either. So, <laughs> 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 but look, you know, they're 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 a great squad, great bunch of players. Uh, you know, just just I, I don't see uh, the youth coming through there just at the moment. They will in a couple of years, but uh, you know, I'd say I've, if there was one team I was to go for that group, Kilbegan, you know, Joseph won't be far away. Yeah, um, we'll come to the predictions in a few minutes. But yeah, uh, but Shane off. Off camera here, we we're, were talking before the game, and, and you, you kind of made some comparisons of St. Joseph's as a young team coming, and you know this they're they're going it, it, they're going to win one by the looks of it anyway because they, they seem to have serious talent there, you know. Look, I hate to put the blight on anyone, and what do I what do I see about St. Joseph's? I, I talked out against them earlier in the, the league division four. And I played a number of those games for 20 minutes at the end of a match. So you get a feeling of what's going on in a place. And I think there's there was an energy about them. There was an ability about them. But there's certainly something that reminded me of Multi Farnham about five or six years ago. That there's a group here that will be good enough, that are possibly already good enough. And it's a matter of wi when will it come for them. And uh, Like I, I've said it to other people before, I always felt Multi were probably a couple of years behind schedule winning a junior championship, but <laughs> the other side of that was they were that good that they got to an All-Ireland Junior Club final in the year that they did it. Um, I hope the winners of the championship, the Junior One Championship, come from this group. I do think that they will. Uh, you can't rule out Bumbrosna with the experience that they have. They were found wanting a couple of years ago for a little bit of fitness. I've bumped into a few of the lads recently, and they look about three years younger than they did back then. They're trimmer. They're probably thinking there's one more go on them. I think you can't rule out Kilbegan. Uh, I don't know what how they are for personnel, if the Fennels are around, if Nigel Scally is going to be available, but there, there are footballers out in Kilbegan that can certainly hold their own and intermediate, never mind win a junior championship. But it's a it's a strong a long journey to win one of these championships. You play five round robin games, you go to a quarter final, you have to navigate that, you have to get to the semi final and ultimately then towards the, the first or second week of October you're playing a county final. Bodies, it's all about bodies. 
it strikes me as a kind of a championship, Shane, that, and Paul, that you, have, you, have to, you nearly have to be timing your run with this championship. It's a little bit different to the intermediate and senior champ championships, as in, you know, you have a lot of games early on, but then once you're out, you're still of... You're still in the, the quarterfinals. You still have a long way to go, you know. And as someone involved in one of the clubs said that to me, that, okay, we're, I was basing some of my judgment there on the league finals and how well teams have done in the league, but it, they said it's such a long championship that, you know, it could be totally different come, come the, the knockout stage of the championship. That's when it really counts. And it's, it, it, it's, a long, it's a long campaign. And teams that are peaking now might necessarily be there or thereabouts at, at the end, you know. Yeah. And uh, just a couple of the players that when I mentioned St. Joseph there, uh, Jordy McDonnell, he had he'd a, he'd a greatly campaigned there. He's, he's, a, he's a lovely footballer, well capable of getting scores. And Mickey Lynham too, had a great game for them. They were, I was really impressed by, by those players for, for Joseph's. But again, just Kilbegan will have that ex experience, you know, they have the, the, the players for, for, for the road. Uh, Sean Pigeon there, I think, has been great over the years. And, uh, you know, the... It, 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 as you said, Tony, 100%, it's, it's a long campaign. It's a long way to the final. It's not till October, yeah. and we're sitting here in June. Predictions, lads, on, on the junior on the junior one. What, what, what way do you see it panning out? Well, look, I think if there is a slight nuance in this. It's slightly different than the, the structured intermediate and senior, and it goes with that, the length. I think it's fantastic. It gives a better opportunity to the, the true junior clubs because there are only going to be two eliminated after the group round robin. Which two will they be? I, it's shocking to say that I'd hope that the team would go out with the championship, but I hope that most, perhaps, is one of them. They have their senior campaign ahead of them, and I would like. I just was very impressed with what I saw with St. Joseph's earlier in the year, and I think if that translates through the championship. And uh, and to keep that progression because they've had you know very good underage structures in place for quite a while, and it's uh, it could possibly come to fruition this year. Okay, their biggest challenge most likely will come from a second string senior outfit because of the numbers that are available. But then those wily lads over in Kilbegan, and we know <laughs> Niall O'Brien is over them, and he'll quietly be doing his work. He's been always very effective in everything he's done. And I'm sure, you know, they're going to have a shout. But I, I'm calling St. Joseph's to Paul. win the junior championship. Paul? Yeah, I put my head in the block. I, you know, again, f from, th from the neutral point of view, as, as Shane has said, we, you know, us neutrals like to see a junior team coming right through. Probably a bit unfair on the, on the, on the bigger teams, the, the, the second team players, because it's their championship too, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, okay, I'll say, you know, my heart says St. Joseph's, my head probably says Kilbegan. Right. Well, I tell you, I'm looking at the fixtures here, and round four stands out to me. St. Joseph's versus Kilbegan Shamrocks. There'll be sparks flying, and it's definitely one I'm going to be at. <laughs> uh, it could be shadow boxing either, Donny. Well, they could have three games played at that stage, three wins under their belt, and not show their hand at all. We'll see. But right. We'll, 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 go we'll and see watch how it, anyway. it goes. <laughs> we'll be back here um, after round four uh, <laughs> with our next podcast, so we'll, uh, we'll have a fair idea of what's, right. what's happening after that. Um, so that is the junior, and... Now we'll move on to the intermediate. Now, <laughs> and I'm looking at intermediate section B, and what <laughs> what a group! Um, Multi Farnham, St Malachy's, Maryland, Ballinacarrigie, Castledown, Fenea, Cool Whitehall, Milltown Pass. There's nothing easy about that, lads. <laughs> I rather <laughs> I, I rather I rather you guys do the predictions here because I couldn't predict anything here. Yeah, uh, look, this is what we want. We we, we, we don't want a, a championship where you can pick the the two obvious winners and it looks you know that's that's the way it is. Uh, we've we've six very good strong teams. Uh, there's it, it's it's just so hard to predict. Very hard for me because I'm sitting beside a Milton Pass man here. His own oh, say what you, say what you want to say, Paul. <laughs> it's like the newspaper never... 
Never refused ink either with whatever you wrote. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> say good. <laughs> good tight group. Uh, look, Milton Pass. Look, we saw them playing there recently in, in the league final again. Look, it's a long way away from the from from, from the championship final, as, as we said. But uh, Milton Pass were just missing so many players. Yet they did very well in that final against that loan. And uh, the question is just just. How many of those players that they were missing are, are, are they going to be back? We, uh, I, I know Sam Duncan is a huge, at, at the moment he's out injured. That's a huge loss for Milton Pass. But look, I expect he'll, he'll be back at some some stage. They can't miss him for too many matches though. Uh, you also have Brandon Kelly. I know Shane will fill us in there. He's in America at the moment. I'm not sure when, when he'll be back. Gone to a cousin's wedding in case the border controller right. is. <laughs> That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> And and then of course Finbar Coyne, you know, uh, I think I'm right in saying he's out for the year as well. Uh, he's certainly missing most of us through injury. They're huge players to be missing, and uh, I may have to get Colin Moore to do a Daisy Fitz impression here. You're not getting that now with me here, but I think I think at this rate the Milton Pass will have to get you to talk out again, Shane. No, no, They're missing so many. Look, uh, you know, uh, Maryland. Then you know you, you've you've got Kieran Martin. We saw what he's capable of doing there last uh, last Sunday up in Breffney Park. Uh, you know he's he's done it so many times for Westmead, but you know he's he's very much on his own there when it comes to quality players and and getting scores. Uh, Callum McCormick as well, of course, a, a good player from from Maryland. Uh, Fine, look, they're, they're going to be up with it. They came with a great burst there a couple of years ago. Did very well in Leinster. Uh, I I don't know has 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 the bubble burst there? Has the have they kind of gone off the boil? And then of course you're you're looking at uh, Malachy's, you know. Jewel Club, lots of hurlers, Castleton going very well. Uh, I suppose it's primarily a, a hurling area, and uh, but there, you know, so Maliki's won Division Three final there in the league, looking good. Uh, wasn't a great game as as we all know. So uh, Maliki's of course will have David Lynch back in with them now to add to add fire to the their attack. And look, it's 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 a tight group. Do you want me to call it? Is that it, Tony? I one. I, 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 Am I looking for I, one here or what? Or? I, I'll get you both to call it at the same time. We'll <laughs> Shane. Shane, like, there's a couple of great ties there. And I suppose like, you look at like, Maryland and Multi Farnham. Multi Farnham up, newly up, you know what I mean? Maryland will be looking to get that win early on there. Like, there's some really good games. Castledown, Fine, Cool, Wright Hall, St. Malachy's in the first round. Milton Pass, Ballin and Like, There's some big games there that sets up the year for a lot of these teams. Yeah, Donny, I was involved in this bottom tier of the Intermediate Championship a couple of years ago at Milton and Conrad, or Milton, like they like to be called. And to be honest, the, the main aim in this bottom section is promotion to the top section for the following year. It's such a difficult championship. The Intermediate, and it's said year after year after year, there are five or six teams that can, on paper, win, win the championship. But when you find yourself in Section B, you're you're only a kick of a ball from relegation to junior or being in a, an intermediate quarterfinal. It, it can be that tight. Uh, panels, again, come into it a lot. I think that, in fairness, like my own club, Milltown Pass, have shown a pedigree over the last number of years. Paul mentioned that they had a, a very good performance with a much decimated squad in a Division Two final against Athlone. I think a lot of credit goes to Kevin Burke and David Martin in there now and the work that Kevin Burke had done previously and Louis Ennis in the last couple of years that they kept these guys there because they showed, in fact, in the last couple of years that they kept these guys there because they showed, in fact, that they have a panel strong enough, they have enough players capable enough playing at that level. And I'd like to think that there's a good long championship run in them. The Concern for me is knowing what a dogfight it is in the bottom section to get one of those two places. And and on that dogfight, and just to pick you up on that, you know, it is a dogfight in that section, but it, it can help. If you look at Tubber Clare last year, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, they were in the B section, they went were all the way to a final. They were an won anomaly it. in that way, and I know that five years ago, Milton Haas did the same thing and lost the final to, to Shandona. But no winner of the championship has come out of that group since this structure has been there. And like I said, I was involved in it. I know how attritional it is. And when you get to a quarter final against a team from the top group who uh, had a little bit more luxury in, in time, and I would say that target number one is get out of this group.
because that gives you at least one more year of intermediate if you can't get over the line this year. And history proves that you possibly won't. I think the two teams best placed to do that in the bottom group, my own club, Milton Pass, and maybe that's my heart and not my head, and I think St. Malachy's. And I think what St. Malachy's have going for them at the moment, they have, uh, I think, uh, it's the fifth year of Kenny McKinley being in charge. But couple that with Alan Mangan is over the hurlers. The hurlers are county champions. I uh, think 2013, Castletown won a senior hurling championship and they won an intermediate football championship in the one year because there was a good synergy between both camps. And I think they have that there. Um, I think Angus Clark is coming back and will be hurling and possibly playing football during the year. They've had their Division 3 win. I think on paper, they're the two teams that That's should. Right. And it was quite surprising last year that they dropped from the top group. But pa Paul, yeah. well, what I, I agree there. Just, just to back up, I agree. I think uh, that, uh, yeah, that Malachy's Milton Pass, you know, problem coming out of the group. But do I see them as overall championship winners? No, we'll I don't. We'll come. We'll yeah, come that's back. I know, but we'll just come, just to we'll clarify that. But there's one other thing. I was singing their praises, but yeah, uh, yeah I know. Understand. Get out of the group. And as you said, they mightn't be too far away from it. Yes. So target number one in the group is to get out of it. Target, yeah. target number two in that group, Donny, is do not get relegated. Yeah. So that's the difficulty here. There yeah. is a relegation situation. One of those teams is going to be playing their trade 2024 in junior football and and and, and talking on th talking on that Shane just could pick, you, pick you up on that yeah who could it be you know it I could I, I, I personally it? couldn't predict anyone yeah. I don't know if you can or who'll be there who'll be in the mix for that in your, your opinion I I'd, I'd worry about Maryland if Kieran Martin wasn't playing with them to be honest you know if he was to pick up an injury or not play You'd, you'd really worry where where a lot of their scores are going to come from, you know. Uh, I, I'd, I'd fear for them. And then, of course, you know, Finney always battling out there. The hurlers are going well now. Castle Pollard are firing all cinders, and the attention will turn to the hurling, especially after they're doing so well in Division 1 there. So they, they, they could be called, uh, it could be between those two for that little, the bottom spot th this year, you know. Right. Shane? Yeah, they're the obvious choices that you, you go with. Well, not Maryland aren't as, as obvious for me because Maryland haven't been down junior. Mm. You know, you you look at Multi were there not so long ago. Balancard or yeah, Balancardi were there not so long ago. I don't know the last time that Maryland operated at junior level. Milton Pass were down there. You know, there's a little bit of that there in that group. Look, Fine for me because you have your Castle Pollard horrors and Lachlan Gale horrors and you know, it is that side of the county. They've always been kind of an up and down yo-yo type of team, yeah. and in their cyclical form, they're probably due to drop back down shortly. Difficult to call. Uh, I think Milton Pass will have enough guile to avoid a relegation. I don't know if they've enough strength and depth with their current injuries and to to get out of the group. I think Malachy's have enough guile to avoid it. I think Maryland have a, a nice one there. Just a big game for them will be Milton Pass because there's a Maryland man managing Milton Pass and David Martin at the moment. Not that they want to get one over on him, but there'll be an extra bit in it. And I, th yeah, I think that Kieran Martin's obviously massive. Um, we didn't talk a whole lot about Multi. Yeah. Multi could mm. go on a run on this championship led by Wally and McGivney and drive on. They were in a uh, Leinster semi final of the junior last year. They set up defensively for much of that season, which I think is preparation for this intermediate championship. Mm. Stephen Cleary is there again with Tosh McDonald, and you know, there's a familiarity. They'll know what they're able to do. And as we said earlier, Shane, we were speaking, yeah. Sean Rock, a huge loss for the yeah, multi there, you know. He's a fortunate lock. injury. I, Look, I said their championship without him last year. He was in America. He's a very unfortunate injury, but no, he won't play football this year. Look, uh, l listening to you guys, <laughs> the experts, listening to you, <laughs> like know. it's it's really it's very hard one to call, you know. Yeah. And and that's before we even get to the to the A group, you know. Mm -hmm. And we look at the A group: Ballymore, Rosemount, Castle Daly, St Mary's, Roxford Bridge, Milltown, Tubber Clare. Like again, some huge games there. Who's like? I know you have the top four, but you know that's that's a massive group too, Paul. Yeah, I suppose 
probably Lorcan Derby's down there that end of the county is in Castle Daly and Tubber Clare and Rosemount, you know. Yeah. They'll be the, all those games will be, you know, the Rosemount be nothing between them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um you know, Rosemount coming down from senior, you know, they're gonna find it very tough. It seemed to be all over the place last year when they were when they were going down and a lot of uh, you know, unsettlement in the camp there. Uh, they'll they'll have to rise again. They'll 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 find it difficult. St Mary's Rush Bridge always kind of always kind of threatened. They always promise and, and sometimes don't fulfil that pr- that promise. Uh, Ballymore, uh, they're interesting. I I used to, when I go along to Ballymore games a few years ago. I remember how, how limited they were in attack, and you know I think the average maybe eight eight points a game or something like that, and th- there was never much in it. That's changed. There's some good young players coming along now in Ballymore. There's a bit of momentum behind them and some, some talented players there, you know. Uh, Castle Daly, always, always good experience in Castle Daly. Good, good strong team. Uh, and, uh, you know, Milltown, very good too. I, 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 I like Tuba Clare. I like what I saw from the last year. Uh, strong, fit. Uh, like to play open, attacking football. Uh, very unlucky last year. Not to get up, and uh, you know, I'll, it, you know, th- these games are they're, they're so hard to predict. And again, the first round games in all of these championships, the first round games mean so, so much. Castle Daly, Tubber Clare, they're a hu- huge game uh, this weekend. Could go either way, but you know, I, I have strong fancy there for for Tubber Clare doing well out in that group. Shane, yeah, I, the, the dynamic of this group is different, Donny. I mentioned it. There's no relegation fear. There's planning for three knockout games. You get out of the group, you get one of the four places out of the group, and we'll talk about it in the senior as well. You're planning to peak for quarter final, semi final. And if all things go well, you're planning to peak for a semi final and a final. Which in itself sometimes can be tricky. It can be tricky, but that's the target directly out of the group into a semi final. Let someone else have the banana skin of a quarter final. And can I just stop you there I'm sorry of course. interrupting you but just looking at the fixtures your last round five fixture is a week previous to your quarter final so there is a real incentive now to qualify for that semi-final spot uh, not that there wasn't before this but it is, it is a little bit a little uh, bit something extra there now it's, n- it's no different than where Galway find themselves this weekend after losing to Armad. they're out next weekend in a do or die game hmm. and have the time to recuperate I think that um, what can happen is that you lose that round five game, momentum is lost, you've had enough points to go into a quarter final, and you're feeling a little bit edgy. So, of course, the target is to get to a semi final. It keeps mm. the squad safe, it lessens the number of minutes that you need to play to win a championship. I think all teams in the group are capable of getting that qualifying, s- one of those four qualifying spots. Uh, are all four teams capable of pushing on from there to win it? I don't think so. And it will be an interesting group, but who, who handles it well? And just to take you up at that point then, and, and I'll pose the question to both of you. Okay, there's four going to come on. Who, who in this group, who are the challengers? Who do you feel? Are the main contenders yeah. for the championship? For me, they're... Uh, look, T- Tubber Clare based on last year. Tubber Clare hugely impressed me last year in their football in th- their fitness, their physique, uh, look, depends on if young Whitaker is back and flying, mm. etc., and how they react to last year's championship. Mm. There's actually a bit of a trend in the intermediate where you lose one and then you win one. Mm. Uh, you know, you need to lose one to win one. I think they were a little bit fortuitous to get as far as they did it last year. I think the team that threw that left the championship behind them last year was Milltown. They had a uh, a difficult enough free to bring a game against their arch rival Shandon or their local rival Shandon, I shouldn't say arch rival, to penalties, where they were in the ascendancy coming into that after extra time. And I think all round had the quality to win yeah. a championship. It went on that Shandona went on and won it and got promoted. So I think they'll feel, Michael McNamee will feel there's unfinished business over there. Uh, and, uh, and to take you up on that point again, I'm sorry, but the Garcia, but. Shandona ground out a championship last year. They stumbled they w- to one. They were bet in two or three games and grounded out. And 
that will be a factor with the, your, your Rosemounts and your Castle Dailies. They've ground out, they've played maybe senior football. Do you know, it does help when you've been playing senior football to be able to grind out them results. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I think it's fair to say, and it's n- not disingenuous to Shandona, they stumbled to a final, but they won their final, mm. you know, and they got there, and it is that little bit of experience and n- not fearing what can happen because they know what it's like to lose. They mm. l- they've, in fact, lost quite a f- few over the years. Um, but uh, we talk about Shandona, I think, yeah. when we get to the senior, mm. but uh, the point being that I think Milltown had a route to a championship last year. Can they bring that again? I think they can because I think they've probably three very good young footballers now available to play senior, which bolsters their panel. And some of the older statesmen that have always been there and reliable to come in and try and see out games. When you mix that blend with what they have starting, so I talk about Sean Dillon, young Ballasty, young Duncan, all coming in. You have two Murtas in the middle of the field who are progressing to be lovely footballers. You have Ben McGurn. There's talk that Joe Halligan is back on the scene. I hear whispers that Ja Boyce might be home for a wedding, for an extended wedding during the summer. Mm. You're looking at a formidable outfit there Mm. that can, if they get the run that they need through that group, could go on and win a championship. Equally, we mentioned Tobacco Clare, we mentioned Whittaker and what they can do. But also remember their minors last year won a championship quite impressively. Mm. They'll have a few more coming along. And they have quite a few more coming so I think there's something, we, we said it last year on ERV TV, there's something brewing down in Tubber Clare. Just, they need to get there within the next two seasons. I'm not putting pressure on them to get there now. They need to for this to be worthwhile. St. Mary's Roger Bridge have been as low as junior and right up to senior in the last six or seven years. They're missing a couple of players. I know Jordan Ajani is, isn't available, and I think, is it Ned Cully is, or Niall Cully, I don't know which of the boys isn't around so that'll weaken them a little bit but very astute management in Alan Gavin I don't think Peter Tormey's involved anymore but Damien will be there as a someone to lean on uh, Ballymore is going to be my dark horse okay. for I think right. Ballymore I think it's Carol Dermody he's teaching over in multi mm. granted it was a division 7 game I was watching but there was so much tactical nounce in that Division 7 game that I watched last Monday night that impressed me that if that's been relayed up a, a few levels up into the intermediate team and it's been adopted as well, I think that's the difference in winning an intermediate and being able to play senior from there on is the tactical side of it. They're all doing the same physicality. They're all doing the same technical stuff. But I, I just saw something in Ballymore and Paul mentioned some of the younger players coming through. Yeah. Just suppose then to, to sum up, Paul. What you know? What's what's your view on? We'll we'll sum up on the group, and then yeah. we'll we'll ask you vote for your winners. Pretty, it's becoming clear who you think is going to win it, but we'll we'll get the prediction of winners. So what are you looking for now, Donny? The the two the, two the finalists, <laughs> the finalists and the winner, finalists and the winner. And, uh, and your dark horse. We'll get a dark yeah. horse off you as well. Okay, okay, uh, right. I I I think the finalists be. Tubba Clare, Milltown. Right. Yep. Uh, Dark Horse. Dark Horse. I'll, go, I'll just go over to the bridge. I'll go over to St. Mary's Archer Bridge. Uh, yeah, the Tubba Clare, some, some great great attacking players. Rory Delaney there. Uh, uh, Shane mentioned Matthew Whitaker. They also have uh, Tom Kelleher, Fred Kelleher. They're, they're great player. Robbie Curley. I think there's some tremendous potential there. And I just think, you know, they've, they've, they've a lot going for them this year. You know, as, as, as Shane mentioned, Milltown there, uh, you know, uh, the Murtha, I think D- Dylan Murtha's a real great prospect there at midfield for them. D- Dara Hines, another quality player. And, uh, of course, we, we all know about Ben McGowan. He's, he's, he's a talent. So those players, I expect those to shine this year in, in this championship. So there's my prediction of the two finalists, Milltown and Tubba Clare. Yeah. P- Shane, we know your dark horse is Ballymore. You're... you're Think you're, I think you're swaying to Tubber Clare. No. Shane? No? Give can't me your prediction. Give me your final on your topic. No, I have to give a different t- team to the topic. <laughs> uh, fuck, it's so hard. It's the Intermediate Championship yeah. in Westmead. Has anyone ever oh gotten God. it right? No, I don't think and so. If I, say a team and they, if I say a team and their year doesn't go well enough for them, you will be it blamed. comes back and gets <laughs> yeah, to you. Um, Milton or Conrad will win the Intermediate Championship this year. Right. 
I can't say who they play in the final. Okay. But they'll win. And Ballymore will be a surprise packet. Ballymore will qualify for at least a quarter final. That's what I mean by a dark horse. People wouldn't tip them. I think Ballymore, at least a quarter final from that group, that means one of the bigger teams is gone. It promises to be some championship, always as, as always. It is. I'll be buying my group is, game. Is. I'll be buying my group game tickets for that <laughs> it's, anyway. It's, for it's two or three teams. I'd it's say. it's some championship. We can't we can't lie on that. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, so we'll move on to the Flanagan Cup, the Senior Championship, Shea Murta Senior Championship, and just to mention earlier that the Junior Championships are the Clark's Bar Junior Championships, and. Uh, both their intermediate and senior championships are sponsored by the great Shea Murta precast. Um, Section B, Athlone, Moat, Gary Castle, Shandona, Mullingar, Shamrocks and Tang. That's a tough one. That's just, that's an outstanding group. It's, in, it's, in, it's incredible. Uh, you just look at the, the, the history there alone. Uh, you know, I, I suppose what's pointed out to me is there, there's some, some huge big names of clubs there rather than great teams. You know, uh, you, you look at you, Shamrocks, Athlone, Moat, Gary Castle, you look down to the history of Westmead GA, Gary Castle more recently have dominated, but the other three have all, you know, g- huge amount of titles. If, if you even look, and I'm just, I'm just moving on to Section A for a second, just to mention the teams in Section A off the top of my head have something in or around between them. 23 senior titles, you know, this group, Section B, Shamrocks, Athlone, Moat, Gary Castle, it's close to 50 titles between oh, them. That's a good set. You know, uh, 49 to be exact on, on, on my count, and <laughs> I, I could have got one wrong, but uh, that shows you the history there, but yet teams like Shamrocks and Gary Castle have come down from, from Section A this uh, uh, last year, and, uh, you know, as Shane has mentioned, that we mentioned before about the other championships, suddenly... You know, there's that fear of getting the drop. You know, you have a you have a bad start. You, you know, you have a couple of bad results. The next thing you're looking at the trap door below you. You know, it's incredible to think that some of those teams could actually be playing, you know, intermediate football next year. Uh, and it's it's also to say that two of these teams will go forward from the group, and you're looking at you know Shamrocks at loan, Gary Castle. So someone's going to lose out there. Even looking at Shandona, strong too. Uh, Athlone missed out last year, of course. Mm. Finished third in the group. Narrowly missed out, but they missed out nonetheless. Yeah. Been knocking on the door again. Um, that, uh, that, that worry is there. You know, you looked at the, I looked at the Kerry Championship last year. Mm-hmm. You had Austin Stacks dropped from senior yep. to intermediate. You know what I mean? So yep. it does happen. Yep. They were yep. they were county senior club championship yeah. champions down there. So mm. it, as you say, that is yeah. a real factor. But do you actually see that happening? Oh, it could easily happen. Yeah? It could easily happen. See what happens. Somebody see, get relegated. See, Somebody see will some get relegated. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I'm looking. I'm looking at at more most more recent county finalists in in your your Gary Castle and your your Mullingar You have the 2018 you and 2019 yeah. county champions in that group. Yeah. Do you? Do, would you? Could you see that happening? Oh, could it could happen? Okay. Yeah. I think of the two of them, it might sound surprising because they were in a, a final only a couple of years ago. But I think Gary Castle are in more jeopardy or more. Potentially than Shamrocks. I think right. Shamrocks yeah. actually have survived their two danger years, yeah. and I think they they maintained their position in Section A for last year's championship, which I think was enough for them to restructure or rebuild or do whatever they needed to do within the club. And they've had a really good league as well, Shane. And I think that it's evident that mm. they had a good Division One league. They were in Division Three and Division Six final, and I think it's evident that they've done that rebuilding. They've, I, I feel they've avoided that okay. happening. Uh, I think Gary Castle have been senior since nineteen ninety seven, because I think I played against them myself in ninety six in the intermediate championship, right. and they went. They won. I think they might have won senior to follow, or went senior. The one, the one to follow. They were betting the semi-final in '96. They're a very young club, 1981. So it's a, it's a phenomenal record that they have had. They've had excellent servants. Um, You have to look what causes these things to happen, and it's obviously player profile and excellent players that they've had over the years. But 
age profile comes into it but behind that then is an underage structure that has to be propping this up and mm. conveyor belt conveyor belt conveyor belt and i don't think that that's not that it's been ignored in gary castle they don't seem to ignore anything but it just hasn't been they're not playing in the a flight of competitions they're down in division threes and division fours in right. in 15s and 13s <laughs> and things like that so i think it's it's a potential you ask me is it going to happen i'd say no no i don't i think there's probably enough in these guys they're still going back to the well the same group the gaffies the mccallans you know they're they're going back and they're dragging them through this but it can't last forever so gary castle have to find something uh, talking that way it, i'm it not talking about them getting out of the group yeah, I, I don't I think I they'll get out of the group you'd have to think that they're they'll grind it out and i like don't think they'll go up or down yeah there's yeah. just such a like the, the games i'm looking at the games in it and there's really, Paul. There's really nothing between any of them. Like there's so going to be so, so many, many games. Local that are, yeah, but there's so many local be, derbies as well. Yeah, though, but there's going, going to be so many games that are going to be win one, lose one, win oh one, yeah, lose. You know, yeah. and a kick of a ball in them yeah. at the end. You know, as we saw. Uh, I suppose Shane, they're like, talking about uh, Gary Castle, the, the new manager in place this year. Meant to get back to you on that earlier, Shane. Sorry yeah, about John uh, Benton. John right, Benton, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. And he's he's good experience there. Yeah. Uh, he's an experience well, he, he's in common as well. And uh, so, look, you know, let's give him a chance. He could turn absolutely, the whole thing yeah. around. Oh, they love it. They love it being written off. They're oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> that would be Gary Cox. You're, you're, you're definitely getting a phone call after I'll this. Get, <laughs> I'll eventually get a county medal out of it if they go on and do it. <laughs> no, they look, look, it's for the first time in, in quite a while, that bottom group in the senior championship is so tight. They're it's all, doggy dog. They're all so equal. But just... Who's going to challenge? Who's who? Who are we looking at here, lads, for the top two in this group? You know, we, we've looked at that well, loan, at loan again, a great league paper. as well. I called in the paper this week, and I wouldn't change my mind from from the paper. And ask me where I got it from. It's kind of just a, a gut feeling, and I think I, I think I said Shamrocks and Moat would come out of the group. Right. Okay. Yeah. I would go with I would go with Shamrocks and Loan just to come out of the group this year. Okay. Uh, interesting. None of us have. Gone for Gary Castle, which is it's a big call. Yeah, he'll yeah. be out to prove us wrong, no doubt. But yeah, and and uh, you know, uh, we did we didn't even mention Chandon in in, in this group yet. Tang uh, will make again, Nick. Yeah, just so true. Yeah, it's, it's um, I, th I think Tang will struggle to be honest. I think think they'll they'll really struggle, just lacking a bit of firepower and that. Uh, they also have a new manager in Tang. They've uh, Keith Higgins is in with them this year. Yeah, good man. So now I have to yeah, say, you know, yeah. doing great things. Yeah, Kilbegin all all, all the clubs are now appointing good managers. I mean, you don't get a job at this level unless you know you've lots of experience and, and lots going for you. That's why we're uh, sitting here talking. <laughs> 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 and uh, Sh Sh Shandona, uh, look, you know, they've 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 lots of uh, good good players on board. Uh, you know, Daniel Scal has been with the Westmead panel this year. Tom Malloy's been in there with, with the panel. Interesting, from, from what I hear, uh, Aaron Craig hasn't tugged out for them this year. He was midfield for them last year, played very well. Uh, so I doubt if he's going to come on board all of a sudden. Uh, he may come back later in the year. Uh, uh, listening to both of you and yeah. both you're, you're talking about... Gary Don't Hassel put words in me mouth. No, no, no. Don't you're, talk, you're talking about Gary Castle and you're talking about St. Loman. Or, or, sorry, you're talking about Gary Castle. You're talking about Shandona. Mm. The boat meet next Sunday in Moat. Yes, yeah, and, and that, that's going to be a massive. game. And we always say that the first game is crucial. You know, it's, it's crucial. But and 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 what a game! Uh, interestingly, too, Shandona. I've just mentioned. I mentioned him the top of this week as well. They they have Simon Carr is back playing with them and right. playing very well. Finished his tennis career, I believe. But hey, he's, he's, he's someone to come in there. And, uh, you know, like, Sh Shandona have that experience of having played senior football just two years ago. I think that'll really stand to them. Kevin Hickey's still in charge. I, and it'll, it, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll they'll be able to maintain themselves, I, yeah. I think, quite well. So you're saying out of the group? Ah, I'm saying out of the group. I said Shamrocks and, and Athlone. Athlone. And, yeah, yeah we, we, you've said... Uh, I said Shamrocks and Moat, and I don't know why. Yeah. You're, you're and I and just feel that Moat are on a real just curve over, the, uh, like a steady yeah. curve over the last number yeah. of years. The and new manager this year, I think, uh, as well. Who's that? Um, I'm so which club? Uh, Moat. Yeah, uh, Liam, 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 Liam McNeil yeah. uh, is in this year. He Manage managed Kinney Gad yeah. for the last couple of years. Mm. He brought Kinney Gad on. Mm. He did very well with them. Yeah. I've spoken to him after a lot of games, and 
you know, he's 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 quite good. He's he's very good. He kn- he knows the game inside out. Mm. Uh, look, it's it's a new voice for them, and 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 that can you know, you can often get a balance with absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah. I think yeah, it's difficult to call who's the two to come out with. I I think it's more evident than in the intermediate even. I think Tang are in trouble. Okay. Uh, I think Tang as much as like I've always gone grave with the Tang lads and always. Had an affinity for them. Glad you get on with somebody, Shane. I was in the <laughs> same boat for a long time myself, getting to intermediate semi finals and not pushing on. Now, I had played senior and we came down. Tang have spent a long, long time trying to get up to senior. And I think that was the holy grail for quite a few in the squad. Um, I just think they'll be found wanting there at this level. I Even last year, they were in a relegation match. That was a bizarre match, and I don't want to go and rehash maybe tactics of whatever was played out, but I I think <laughs> Rosemo might have some regrets about how they handled that game, and Tang stayed up by the skin of their teeth, and I think they're in a much more difficult group now compared to last, last year, year, and could find themselves wanting quite significantly, because they'll be the target for everybody. Everybody's target will... We have to be able to... I was saying that Tang have always acquitted themselves very well in yeah. Division One company in the league, but you start throwing county footballers in there and harder ground and yeah. Yeah. summertime. I I feel for them a bit because it would be great, but then Mike Tumulty has moved on from there as well, yeah. and he he was kind of the rock of everything that was going well for them, mm. and so I just think that. It, it could be difficult, very difficult for them. And just we mentioned Shamrocks there, and uh, interestingly, he may have retired from the inter county scene, but Dennis Croon is still that, absolutely yeah. playing outstanding football for Shamrocks, yeah. which, which is great which to hear. Which probably helped them in the league yeah. campaign that they had everyone there. Absolutely. Going, you know, I, interesting, out. you said about Shamrocks having every. So far, I believe, if my sources are right, that Philip Shaw and Goals, who's played for years, hasn't tugged out from this year so far, unlikely to come back in at this sudden stage so we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens there we'll Owen Doran has been in goals good young player but you know goalkeepers something we probably haven't mentioned uh, huge now in the modern game uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see in these championships now do we see any Niall Morgans coming down Actually, the pitch yes very, very soloing down yeah. the pitch uh, who, who does that who doesn't uh, we, we've seen them coming down taking free kicks and all the rest it was interesting up in Breffney Park last Sunday at one stage Niall Morgan came out for Tyrone and he crossed the halfway line with the ball in his hands. And when he did, there was absolutely no player behind him in the entire half of the pitch. I mean, not one. It was me that nobody, Tyrone had no defenders, oh, all please, players in one half. Don't encourage but, but we will, I expect to see some goalkeepers come down the field this, this, to this certain, championship to a certain extent. and uh, something to look at. I, I, think I, more, I think the further up the levels, I don't expect to see it. A yes, no, lower level, in, absolutely. In junior yeah. two. Yeah. I, maybe. There will be the odd surprise like that thrown up in Section A of the Senior Championship. Mm-hmm. And you have to, it's horses for courses. Yeah. Well, it this is you, that type of tactic. Now, every mind you, I saw Monaghan's under 15 squad doing it and mm-hmm. been very accomplished at it. But mm-hmm. again, you're dealing with guys who are technically very good and they're playing at elite level. Yeah. Just don't encourage it. Uh, we know that. Gaelic football isn't the, the best spectacle at the moment, and I hope what's happening at the county level isn't trickling down to, to managers at this level because it's not appropriate. We don't have the conditioning and players at club level to do it. It's not appropriate to play the game that way. Yeah. You know, you play it at the level that you're at. I, I certainly would say that over the last couple of years, if you watch county finals, which a lot of people get exposure mm. to, there's less tactics yes. in the junior than there are in the intermediate and the senior, but you can overdo it and spoil the whole thing altogether. Just to finish up on the sec- on that section B, and we'll we'll come up to the overall championship yeah. in a moment. But yeah. relegation, Paul, you didn't you you, you kind of sidestepped that one. No, I don't think <laughs> I, th- I thought I mentioned Tang. I thought I thought I mentioned. Yeah, are you? Are you? <laughs> that are means you that means I, I can't go drinking in the three jolly pigeons <laughs> three, no, no, anymore. No. So you'd be you'd be looking towards Tang. But yeah, that'll be yeah. kind of concur with the so both both of you. Then yeah, would be that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will move on to section A and then we'll have a look at the overall. Uh, Corazon, Kinnegad, Colliery, Caloocan, the Downs, Tyrrells Pass, St. Lomans, Mullingar. 
So. I love it. Hmm? I love it. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a great group again. Um, the day the the powers are changing within Westmead Club football at the moment. You know, there's teams are growing and getting bigger, and they've taken a while to get momentum. There's some teams that are always around the same level, and we've seen like the Gary Castles and Shamrocks dropping off a level. I think, obviously, we have current champions or the Downs. They have to be dethroned by somebody. That's that would be the feeling. There'll be a big target on their back. Yeah. Will they get as? Will Lar Wall get as much out of them as he did last year? They were insatiably hungry for a title. They worked like animals to get that title, and they enjoyed. I'm very sure they enjoyed it, and they went on and represented our county impeccably getting to a Leinster final and losing out to eventual All-Ireland champions. Long journey. Niggles picked up uh, one of their marquee players in Niall Mitchell missing a whole inter-county hurling season pretty much. He came on the, the last couple of games. I know he, he performed heroics against Wexford and got a few minutes at the end of the Antrim game. I think they need an awful lot of things to go their way to hold on to it because we know how difficult it is to do back-to-back -back titles in any sport and any arena. But they're absolutely a team that has to be spoken about as genuine proper contenders. You have the most recently crowned Division One, all county league Division One champions in Kinney Gad. Um, flattered to deceive the last couple of years with the players that they have, with the some of the youth that's coming through. But the the great Jack Cooney and the wily Pascal Keelhan yeah. on the sideline again. They have been working very hard since before Christmas, I think at club level there's no rules about collective training. These guys could play a county final tomorrow morning in terms of their condition and their fitness and where they are. That said, there's a caveat to that. Can they get better between now and then? I'm not so sure. I think they'll get more, a little bit more cohesion. They have a couple of counties. I think... They'll get more, a little bit more cohesion. They have a couple of county lads to come back in with them, but they are where they are and was good enough to win the league. They happen to beat Lomans in that league final. There'll be a little sting in Lomans over that. I know uh, people will say, oh, Lomans were missing it. all their county stars and it won't bother them, but it will. Uh, silverware, silverware. It's not that long ago that Lomans had an empty trophy case that it never looked like they'd get anything beyond an under-14 and an under-16A title. So everything is important to them, and it will sting them a little bit because they had a very, very good league under um, Paddy Dowder, new manager in there. And Paddy has surrounded himself with a lot of people. He is a management team that looks serious that what they want to do. I think there was, I counted 10 the other day involved between selectors and stats people and whatever. So this, Lomans haven't gone away with how serious they are that they no. take championships. And I, I'm not ranking these teams, by the way, I'm talking about them. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. We have a uh, colliery team who have been promoted from intermediate over the last number of years, gone from section B to section A, held their own, and are producing footballers into the county senior setup that are starting or coming on in games. That can't be said for all teams in all grades. So I think that there's a real chance that Colliery will have quite a say in this championship. And then you have the always write them off. They're too small a village. How can they do a Tyrrell's pass in the group that not so long ago could have been relegated? Yeah. And within 12 months, we're 30 seconds away from winning a county championship and they're an enigma. It's hard to know what way to be, but you can never write them off. And then you have the hurlers that wear yellow jerseys for the old football championship, the way people talk about Kalukan, and I'm, I'm saying that tongue in cheek. Kalukan have been senior since 1995. Uh, no, it's earlier. No, I think 1995. No, the Bet Balnacurrigan in 2005, I think. Uh, maybe look it up. 
I even remember playing yeah, intermediate football right, against yeah. Kaluka <laughs> and I remember them winning a championship and I don't ever remember them coming back. I could be wrong. It has happened before, <laughs> don't it? But don't write them off. They're, yeah, a lot of the guys like to play her and I think it's their biggest weakness is that they don't have a football in their hand enough. They could have beaten Normans last year in a, a round-robin game. Yeah. If yeah. their kicking was more accurate, they're certainly physical enough they're dogged enough, they're fit enough, it's whether they have enough football in their hands. Because you're playing, this is senior club football now, so th- there's no room for sloppy solos, there's no room for wild kicking off the outside of the boot, that sort of stuff. This is, everything has to be accurate. And I think that's Kalukan's downfall, because they certainly, if they spent more time with the big ball in their hands, they could compete for a, for a championship. So I've, I've mentioned all six teams. I do think that well, I, I think Thomas just informed me that I'm, I'm right. Oh uh, yeah, well, <laughs> 2005. 2005. It's okay. Melvin Me- has to tell you I was in the club. I don't remember. I'll put that bit out, Shane. On, on that note, that. we'll move on to Paul. Yeah, there. <laughs> Paul there. <laughs> yeah, looking at uh, Section A uh, again. I suppose a different dynamic here. First of all, I suppose there's not there's not the threat of relegation hovering over these teams. Uh, you know, you, you can drop down to Section B next year. You're still playing uh, senior football. And, you know, as Kalukan showed last year, you know, came through very well. And from Section B got to a, a semi-final, did, did very well. So, so you don't, you, you, uh, you have different planning for, 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 for this uh, run of games. Uh, you, you know, you don't get a good start. You can pick it up later and, and still, with four teams to come out of it as well, go through. It's it's a little bit, uh, uh, sh- shall we say, more more relaxed early on, uh, and again looking at the, the dynamic of the of the, the the spread around the county. When we're just looking back at Section B for, for a minute, down uh, the at Lawn end of the county, you have the likes of Tang at Lawn, Moat, and Gary Castle, and that group. You know, all mm. very close. This is more spread out over over, over the over the county, mm. and uh, there's there's a nice spread of teams. Uh, just looking at them then. Uh, obviously, we, we've we I suppose we've got the big two, Lomans, the Downs. Everyone's talking about them. You know, played in last year's county final, the last, the previous winners there. But uh, I suppose it, it, I look at Kalukan first. Uh, you know, if they were full strength, you know, they do very well and everything. But from what I hear, and Kalukan aren't full strength this year and are, are struggling in, in that department. Uh, you get don't a lot of information out of these camps, Paul. How do we get all this information? <laughs> you have to pay them well, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> and just swallow uh, every bit they tell you. True, true. They're probably a more lads you, training for football now than they ever we, have we, in the new life. We'll <laughs> probably see loads of these players playing at the weekend. You know, yeah. I, I hear, for example, the Doyles, Killian and Karen. You know, I believe they could be away at the moment, could miss the first couple of rounds of, of championship. It'll be interesting to, to see that. Uh, Jim McCurran's there huge player for them picked up a hand injury recently you know he's a big doubt uh, young Sammy Clark is playing soccer at the moment Joey Boyle I believe is you know giving his commitment to the hurling not sure if he I don't think he's played the football yet this year he could turn out and at the weekend who knows those kind of things but if they don't have those kind of players then they're, they're in serious trouble in this group let's let's face it they're, they're big players they need everybody playing and they have that distraction of the hurling there as well. They've managed it very well, has to be said. You know, we say when when a dual club isn't doing well, we say, well, how can they manage it? But you know, between Kaluk and Raharney, they just do it brilliantly out there, and, and have managed so much success for such a small area. Charles Pass, we look at them. Uh, you know, I mentioned Dennis Crew and still starring for Shamrocks. Jerigan still starring for Charles Pass. You know, uh, and Dennis Glennon. Dennis, I think he's entering his twentieth year this wow. year at senior football. Very close, nineteenth, twentieth year, and look, he's looking as fit as ever. You'd have to say he's he's flying. Uh, you know, again, they they'll, they'll probably struggle at times. Uh, just just have enough in the forward department. Probably reliant on 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 Jer. Uh, you you wonder there's a couple of up and coming players. Evan Connell is very good. Peter Pearson. Of course, Peter Clark, you know, Castellan Hurdle, but playing with Turns Pass, he's flying at the moment in all Nigel grades. Nigel Hart was out in Big loss at the moment, a big be loss. A big loss yeah. for them if, yeah. if he's not back for championship. Ab- absolutely. And of course, Jim, Jimmy Ganood in there, he's coming back. Look, he's, he's played very well. Jimmy operates there and he, he organises everything defensively and they, they look to him for leadership at yeah. the back. Nigel 
I think, uh, developed as a player from playing with Jamie. Mm -hmm. uh, different physique, but is needed there. You mm -hmm. have Conor Slevin not long yep. off a uh, county senior panel. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that they're decent around the back. Yeah. Have they the firepower mm -hmm. to have the like Dennis has been phenomenal for them uh, playing the sweeping role in the latter years. Yeah. I think he, he had a hiatus for twelve months and they got relegated from the top group to the bottom group without winning a game. He went back in and he, maybe it doesn't get noticed what he's this kind of security gives them. Jerry Egan is their scorer in chief. Can they find more scorers mm. that can handle the yeah. heat of championship? Yeah. I don't know if you heard, Paul, you hear a lot of things out of these um out of these camps, but David Glennon is back training in Tyrrell's Pass. Yeah, came on in the league final there recently for them. So that's potentially <laughs> it another trick yep. up their sleeve. Um just now it could be looked at a different way, it could be looked at like the Cluxon situation in Dublin. Yeah. We're going back to the, the same old, the same old, the same old, because we've nothing coming through. But equally, the quality is there if it's yeah. if it's needed, if it works. It's just, uh, I've always given Tourist Pass a massive chance in a championship. I just think they're a, a player. Step too far from, this year. yeah. And Donny, just want to mention that the Colliery, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing very well. When the, again, when they're 100% they'll have everybody, you know, I, 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 they've caused shocks in the past and I think they can really cause cause a few more. When you look at Kevin Maguire and then they have, you know, the likes of Conor McCormick in there, fresh from the county, what he'll have learned from playing with the county will be a huge. Senan Baker there, his brother Ty coming on the scene as well. Uh, and of course Damien Dolan's been playing years with them as well there. I know, uh, I understand that they're missing Owen, Owen Fox. Yeah, that that's so a big so loss so for them, obviously. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Kevin Maguire. I mean, you know, he's played the last couple of games. Let's face it, carrying an injury for Westmead. He's managed to get through it. Went down in Breffley on Sunday in the middle of the match. Needed treatment of that ankle. Uh, didn't didn't finish the game. Now you'd never take Kevin off, you know, uh, un unless he was absolutely injured. He'd gone through the mill at that stage, or, or unless he was sent off, which he was in the previous game. But uh, they'll they'll call you need Kevin at a hundred percent. Can he be 100% for the first game, which is Kinney Gad this weekend? Do they I need him 100% for the first game? Paul? Yes, they That's do, because, I think this because Kinney Gad is a game. It, it's actually a game Callery could win if they've everybody 100% fit. Oh, I agree. I think they could uh, win any every of the games chance. if everyone... Yeah. I think that we, we talked about it earlier in the conversation about Managing. the bringing in senior county footballers back into their squads, and some of them have the luxury of having more than others. I do absolutely agree that Kevin Maguire is so important to how far Colliery get in this championship. But I think because they're in the top group that you can plan better. So I, I can't manage injuries for people, but if Kevin needs two weeks, a complete rest to be able to play through a championship, you give it to him now rather than wait for the two week break that's in the middle of the championship. But I think because I, I, I don't think they'd beat Lomans and the Downs, so they'll look at the other games and Kenny Gall is a game they could be targeting to win and a better chance of winning on, on this it's probably Yeah, yeah. Like it's probably, and it goes for, for all the teams, some of these games could be coming a bit too soon for yes. them. But as you alluded to earlier, Shane, that the teams in the A sections probably have a little bit more that they can hold back. If they, Not even hold back, if they're carrying a couple of injuries or that, that... You know, you target your games going so forward. So the, the first championship game last year inside in the park after the Talton Cup win was St. Lomans and Colliery. That's Isn't right, that correct? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, there was a strange move by Colliery management, I, whether it was tactical or not, that the whole inside line didn't start. But equally, Ronald too lined out at centre forward for St. Lomans. And if somebody came off Mars and sat down in the Cusy Park, you wouldn't have picked him out as one of the best players in the country because the timing was wrong. Be at the back of the Talton Cup coming in. And I think that Lomans will learn a little bit from that. From that. Now, they negated the group, no problem. They got to a county final. But did, they, did that even that one hour of extra football and Ronan affect later on in the championship? They're able to, I think they've shown that Paddy Dowdle has been quite clever in how he's managed the league and 
I always maintain that if your squad players without county footballers can't be competitive in their league, you're not going to win a championship with them mm -hmm. because they, you're not be able to go deep enough into your, your panel when you need it during the championship. I would expect that Lomers would be slightly weakened at the weekend. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, although John Heslin looks... I, I think John Heslin played a, a whole club season last year mm -hmm. with a niggle. But uh, one game he missed last year, correct me if I'm wrong, was against the Downs, a game that the Downs won really easy in Downs the early rounds. Downs scored and everybody kind of two fantastic goals in that yeah, game yeah. where you could see what Lara Wall was about yeah. and how he opened them up. And people said, don't mind that. Lomans were missing, they were missing Heslin, they were missing that. Mm. But really, that was the seeds for what the Downs produced later in the championship. Yeah, it which gave them a momentum. Gave them a momentum. The new Lomans yeah. were beatable, gave them confidence. And they just yeah. they just got in a roll like after you that. Be, you beat any Lowman's team yep. in championship football at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know you're doing something right. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I I guess back to Paul's point on Kevin Maguire, and pl playing through injury. I I think Collery will fancy themselves to tumble two or three of these teams in the yep, team. Yeah, I think and so. And I think that I agree. Do, do they look at Kenny Gad as? the easiest one of those two or three that they can tumble, probably not. No. We don't know. I don't know the extent of his injury. It's certainly a big game. I don't think it's a group-defining game mm -hmm. on, on where I it's I going think to go. I think with all teams as well, I suppose, we won't, we're we making predictions here based on who we think, what we know. Yeah. Well, I Paul has the inside line on every <laughs> yeah, I know. team, you know. That. It, it is true. It is true to say that round one and seeing who people have, who clubs have, will be a good guide. We'll have a fair idea after that what, you know, I know for your legs, your Lomans and your Yeah, your but downs, section, you'll section know. A round one and section B round one are totally different things. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Section yeah. B, there's, you, I think I, I said this for the bit I wrote for Paul, statistically you can come out of section B in the senior or intermediate championship with a loss yeah. on your record, but there's no good game to lose in that group. Because if you lose the first one, you start to question yourself. You lose the second one, am I getting complacent? You lose the third one, I might get out of this group. And if you lose the fourth or fifth one, you're going into a quarter final, having lost some momentum and questions about yourself. I think in the A group, it's different. Everybody expects that you're going to shadow punch and feel yourself into a championship to prime for those three knockout games, your quarter final, semi final, final. So, who, where a little, that's where they talk about the bounce of a ball and the rub of a green. I think it's more so in the A section because you are trying to play that little bit of chess with your panel, with your fitness, with your elite players coming back in. How do I manage them so that I have them when I really, really need them? So, yeah. So, look. And just in, in fairness to Kenny Gadd, they've just won the Division 1 league title. So they're going There's to be nothing there. like winning silverware. Absolutely. There was a huge crowd in Cusick Park on the pitch when they won the game. There mightn't be as big a crowd for some of the championship matches. Yeah. It was huge for Kenny Gadd. It meant so much to them. They're also under new management there. Let's call it. I mean, Jack Cooney, one of the best coaches in, in, in the country. We, we know that. You know, guided Westmead to Tolton Cup Bridge. He's in there now. So they're going to have, they're going to have a, a new direction maybe from what they had. I'm going to ask you for your predictions. In So I'll ask two things. We kind of, we've gone through the relegation. Finalists and maybe surprise packet. Uh, okay, <laughs> me. Fairly brief. Yeah, like I said, I wrote already for the paper. I and I've thought about it a little bit more. Um, I think the four teams that qualify from Section A, and I think the winner will come from Section A. Uh, again, I'm putting my neck on the line here because I'm writing off uh, to a degree Terrace Pass and Kalukan, who have just proven so many wrong so many times. But I think the four qualifiers are Kinnegad, Carlstown, or Carlstown, Kinnegad, the Downs. St. Lomans and Collery. And depending on what comes out of the bottom group and what way semi-finals would go, I, I think we'll have a repeat of last year's senior football final. Yeah. Paul? Yeah, uh, I have to say, I basically go along the same lines as, as, as Shane. I, I, I think the, the, the top four in the group will be Lomans, the Downs, Kenny Gad and, and Corey. I, as I said, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Corey can do. Maybe cause a couple of shocks. Who, who knows? Uh, I, you know, Lomans again under Paddy Dowdle, fresh face in there. 
new voice. Uh, he could spur things on. He certainly will have huge passion for the club. He's a lowman's man through and through. And, uh, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll know how to get these lads up for the game. Uh, a couple of young players that Lomans have come on through uh, the, the last couple of years. Jack Gagan there has done very well for them. Danny McCartan's done very well this year too. So they're, they're two new players to add to the, you know, the, the kind of quality that they have there throughout. Um, we all know about the likes of Sam McCartan and Ronan O'Toole, John Heslin, of course, TJ Cox, Shane Dempsey. You just Those names alone, yeah, you don't have that firepower in any other team in the county. And when they hit all guns going... You know, there's, there is nobody to stop them. Uh, you know, now the Downs last year came very good. Can Lara get the same out of them again? They're, they're going to the well again and very hard. Now, Charlie Drum didn't play for them in, in the league. They, they did very well. You know, they were missing a good few players and they just missed out in that league final. Uh, Charlie Drum is back for them, so he'll be an addition. But he's, he's coming back in, taking a while to get back into the games. And, of course, uh, lots lots of uh, quality there. Joe Moran was exceptional for the Downs last year. Can he bring that again this year? You know, course, looking Luke. forward to seeing him play. And he's, he's, he's a huge uh, player, massive strength in that. And, uh, look, you know, the Downs back line played well last year. I, I thought they did really, really well. I'm not sure can they repeat that. Uh, I would just go for uh, Lomans and the Downs in the final again this year. Uh, bottom of the group. I have to say just what I've heard so far could be wrong, but I'll just go with Kalukin at the bottom and okay. repeat of last year's final. Lads, and Lomans to win it. Lomans to win it. <laughs> Lads, look, thanks a million. Uh, I think that was a great discussion. We went a little bit probably over time, but we're harm. We've got, we got great stuff covered there. And uh, look, once again, thanks to uh, Paula Donovan, the editor of the Westmead Topic. And uh, I'd advise anyone out there to go and buy the Westmead Topic today because... There's an excellent, I mean, a really excellent three, three, three page, three four, page, four page, four page yeah. spread in the paper, um, as well as all the the reaction to the match and a season last weekend. Season ticket available, and also a competition for a season ticket, Paul, as well, which gets you access to all the championship games in uh, West Me this year. It's 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 well worth entering, and just uh, during that pre during the the um, the championship uh, feature, I went to. Uh, three uh, well-known local GA experts and got their opinions. And when I was finished with that, then I, I asked Shane for his opinion <laughs> as well. And uh, so, uh, yeah, some, some, some interesting thoughts in there and the odds on, on who's, who's likely to win and, and where to come. So, really great. So, Paul, yeah. thank you very much. And the great uh, yes. Shane O'Donoghue from uh, the Midtown Pass Club and, of course, of Ear VTV. Um, so, just to continue, uh, just to thank the Annabrook House Hotel, uh, here for the lovely room and I see a couple of baskets coming in the boys are looking gleefully over at them um, baskets we're back <laughs> we're back uh, baskets for baskets we're back yeah. uh, we're back on your VTV this Saturday um, first game up quarter past five in Cusick Park it's Carlstown Kenny Gad versus Colliery and uh, followed by at 7.30 the Downs versus St. Lomans Mullingar uh, promises to be a, a huge uh, day, an opening day of our championship and an open weekend. I, for one, can't wait. Uh, big thanks to Tom Brown, uh, who is uh, doing the production on, on this podcast. And stay tuned for Ray Gavin uh, next week, who will be back from sunning himself when he previews with a panel of experts the hurling championship. From me, oh, you're getting experts next week. That's good to hear. <laughs> from me, Donnie Malone, uh, thanks for listening. A, a, a grain of rice is going to tip the scale. Just remember that, lads. <laughs> With his fourth point of the game, the Tweed supporters are coming out of the park. It's over the for the very first time. Have you seen a better Westmead performance than this they've given in the second half? John Heslin now has a support player, may not need him. Goes for it, he scores! It's back with Kieran Martin. Was the captain until he got injured. Here he is. It's Martin. Kieran Martin.